All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how EDS data is obtained in an SEM. And so we'll look at what we call scanning modes. Um, if we have what's called a stationary scan, These are also referred to as point scans. And so because we have a scanning electron beam in the SEM, so again, we have an electron beam and it hits a, a specimen. Well, the scanning part of SEM means that this beam can move along the surface. So if we just maintain the beam in one location, then we typically call this a point scan because the, the, the electron beam is, is stationary. So that's the first part we can have. So we can have a point scan, but we can also have area scans. So if we're looking at it from top down now, so we're kind of looking at an image of the surface, right? So this was our initial electron beam. Well, if we scan over a, a, a larger area, so say this region, so we take the beam started here, and then we move it, and we cover this whole area, that's known as an area scan. We can also do line scans. That's, as you may guess, you make a line on the surface, and that electron beam follows it. And the last part you can do is what we call EDS maps. And so I'll show you an example uh, of all of these. So let me go ahead and show you some examples of this in the slides. All right, so this up here in the, the left corner is an SEM image uh, in uh, an SEM that has an EDS. And so there's also spectrums uh, denoted. So spectrum three, which you just see a tiny little dot, that is an example of a point scan or that stationary mode. So the beam is held at that one spot and then data is collected. So the energy spectrum is collected. The x-rays uh, go to the detector and they're sorted out by energy. Um, two and one, are examples of these area scans. So again, the beam starts up here in the top left and then moves uh, along all the points in this area uh, as it sort of rasters across uh, these things. So basically the beam is held at the first point for an, a given amount of time and then goes to the next and the next and the next. And so it does that in these area scans. So it collects data from this whole area and then we see the spectrum. So this is energy down here, and this is the counts. So you know the same results kind of occur, but the um, area is much larger. Uh, next, um, this is an example of a line scan. So just as, as a reference point, if you're wondering where all this data comes from, this is actually collected from MSC 407. Um, so this is as part of a glass uh, lab. So it's an inorganic glass rod, uh, and it's been exchanged. Um, the uh, potassium ions in the glass have been exchanged for silver ions uh, in a molten bath. And so those are kind of the some of the, the elements that we're seeing. And so this spectrum here that we're seeing Again, the top part here uh, is a kind of a fuzzy quality uh, SEM image. And so it's hard to see some of the features, but there, there are some features. And then this yellow line is the line scan that we're scanning across. And so data is collected from all of these points. But in this case, with a line scan, what the, the useful thing that we can do is instead of with an area scan, so we take all of the area and basically average it and we get a spectrum. Well, with the um, line scan, what we do is we keep all the data points separate. And so this plot down here um, shows the breakdown of that. And so it shows us what elements we have 
and where along the line they are. So here at zero corresponds to this point here, and then down here uh, corresponds to the end of the line over here. And so all of that data for the various points is plotted spatially. So we have a breakdown of where the elements are. And so the usefulness here is that this glass rod um, has vari variations. Uh, and so silicon, you can kind of see it everywhere except for the surface, which is right here. So you see it drop off. Um, and then carbon, which uh, tends to be an impurity, uh, it could be on the carbon tape, uh, that goes up at the surface. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we see uh, sodium. Uh, potassium is very low. Uh, but then you also see a little sp spike down here for silver. So silver um, is basically right at the surface. And then the rest, uh, it's a very low level. And so basically, you only see silver right at the surface of the glass rod. And then the sodium actually goes down in that same region. Uh, and so we see that there's an exchange uh, effectively uh, between sodium and the, um, the silver in, in the glass. So that's something we can see with this type of line scan, which was one of the parts that we had. All right, so the last one, the, I, it's a little dif more difficult, so I wanted to show you a picture of it so you can kind of understand what this EDS map is all about. So imagine that we have an SEM image. So this is the surface that we're looking at. Again, it's the same type of sample. Uh, this is the glass rod. And so this is the edge of a circular glass rod. And then we're looking at the interior here. And so what an EDS map does is, again, we're, we're basically scanning the entire area of the SEM image. So we're taking the ele uh, electron beam starting at the top and then moving uh, to the right. And we're collecting data at each point. So um, whenever we have signal appear, so if we're at this top point and silicon um, is present or a silicon K alpha um, wave, then it appears as a yellow dot. So it produces a dot whenever um, silicon appears at that location. So if you scan across and you see it. So it's saving all of that data about what elements, uh, characteristic x-rays are present uh, and it saves it and it ties it to a particular spatial point on this glass rod. Same thing with sodium. It saves, and whenever you see uh, one of these sort of turqu turquoise colors, that's where a sodium um, K-alpha 1, 2 is appearing. And then the same thing for silver. So the idea here is that this EDS map allows us to map the various elements uh, in this material. And so you see that throughout the whole glass rod, silicon is fairly uniform. Same thing for uh, sodium, it's fairly uniform here. However, just like you saw in the previous line scan, right at the edge, so corresponding to this point here, the silver signal is the highest on the edge, and then it's very low in the interior. So we have a huge, or a much larger silver signal at the edge than we do in the interior. And so this gives us a mapping of where those elements are. And so this is another useful product. But as you can imagine, since we have to scan the entire sample and collect data, these uh, take quite a long time to do. And so, um, they require long times uh, to, to run uh, because we have to have a very high amount of counts to get uh, good signal here. Um, and so these tend to take a very long uh, amount of time. So that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind uh, with this. Um, you might have also noticed that some of the uh, lower intensity elements, so some of these are quite low, um, uh, it, EDS has trouble picking up those low amounts because their intensity is so small compared to the background. And so oftentimes when we're dealing with low concentrations, so less than one weight percent, um, you really need to have either much longer dwell times to get that signal increased, um, or, um, or you need to have other techniques that are better with trace level elements. So we're actually gonna talk about uh, some of those techniques later in the semester. So there's a couple things to do with different scanning modes of EDS inside an SEM.